Hello, hey guys. everybody. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book, episode 32. 32. Woohoo! <laughs> Holy crow, we're at episode 32, making our way through China Tea. Welcome back. I'm super excited for today. As I said in the little intro reel, super excited about the tea we're sipping today. Top mm -hmm. grade by Hao Yin Zhen for the opening day of white tea. Which is only this week. Yes, it's a one. It's a it's a one episode uh, tea category, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it's not an amazing tea category. So uh, yes. let I us. I bet lots of you guys are like a white tea lovers, or mm. have a lot of um, interesting um, information about white tea. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many ways to brew it. It's one of the more flexible sort of how to brew tea. There's. Um, you know, you can have a fresh spring white tea, you can have aged white tea. I know some people brew that in Gaiwan, some people brew that in teapot for their aged white tea. Let us know if you love white tea, mm -hmm. how you brew it, what mm -hmm. kind of white tea you prefer. Uh, we're going to dive into it today on Sunday Tea, back. tea Book. Tea Book. Tea Book. <laughs> Fernanda, and us, hello. Yeah, and let us know what you're brewing uh, today. Are you choosing some white teas or anything else? Uh, feel free to shoot it up. Yes, I absolutely. Chloe C just joined us. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book. Chloe C, welcome to Sunday Tea Book on Instagram. Bruna Palomera, hello on uh, YouTube. And Cindy, great to see you too today. Mm -hmm. Well, we see your little icon on the chat, <laughs> but it's great to have you here with us again today. Um, let's tell them a little bit more about the tea we're brewing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll show you guys on YouTube. I'm going to show you a, just a, another close-up of the tea leaf because it is so beautiful, so fuzzy. And on Instagram, you're going to want to run over to YouTube for a bunch of reasons, not just to see the tea, but we're going to be bringing the tea book up. I'll let Jen talk a bit about what does top grade by Hao Yin Jen really mean. Right. What? Top grade. Why is it top oh. grade? People might wonder. <laughs> Why do we call that top grade by Hao Yin Jen? <laughs> yes, yes, I just uh, didn't expect anything. Usually, I don't talk much in the beginning, which is good. To give I'm trying to job. give her a little bit then of space, suddenly, right? I, I see the ball come in my way. I said, "What?" No, I threw okay. it right at you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is uh, our by Hao Yin Jen from. I don't know, just to show this for the Instagram people if they're looking and want to look at different light. You know, mm -hmm. uh, for us, the top gray is, uh, first of all, it's the first bud of the spring. It's not just harvest on spring. It's the tea plants have rested throughout the winters, and these are the first round of buds for them. Yes. I'm going to hold it up for the YouTube folks. And for the, the material, uh, it is one of the top notch because that. they save up for the whole winter. Yes. And of course, it comes from Fuding in Fujian province, which is the, the, tea, the wide tea location for it. It really, and on the Chaimu Mountain, where the mother oh. bush of white tea was located, mm. it really, that towar, if you've uh, watched our vlog, or have seen some pictures about the Taimu Mountain. It has very amazing environment. Wow. The, yeah. the wild mountain, like the mountain is pretty much wild and really green. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful greenery and the location with the ocean wave. It's moist, it's often yes. very misty and stuff. They produce just that location really produce top notch teas. Just and, beautiful, yeah. I'll put the right. link to that video, the vlog where we're there in the description down below so you can find that easily. It is just amazing. You can, we were on that lookout, I was remembering on top of that building, mm -hmm. we had just come through some of the gardens and we're looking, you know, you look east and you see the ocean or the bay uh, off in the distance and then you turn around and you see the huge rock, the big cliff that sort of characterizes Taimushan. It was just spectacular, so stunning. All right, so, Check that video out later. Right now, we're diving into Sunday Tea Book. Uh, what is Sunday Tea Book? You might be asking. Hey, Terry Todd, drinking a 2010 Chalmay. Cool, good to have you with us. Brewed in a teapot, then simmered. Lovely, great way. Awesome. And Cindy is drinking uh, Yin Zhen with you today, but not top grade, like yours, just one my husband had in his stash. Cool. Beautiful. Raid the hubby stash for Sunday Tea Book. We endorse that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And what, 50% Oxy Oolong? 
Ooh, that's a fancy way to say it. So a 50% oxidized oolong from Amaya Cha in Brazil. Very toasty taste. Very nice. Okay, let us know what you're brewing, how you're brewing it, how you're enjoying it as we go throughout the stream. For those of you who are new to Sunday Tea Book, I'll just describe what that is here. To the, oh, I missed Beren, Beren, yeah. Bereng's going for a Milan Very nice, oh, very nice. Oh, nice, nice. nice. Uh, sorry, missed that. Thanks for letting me know about that. And Dee's Versified just joined us. Welcome on YouTube. So what is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where we, Jen and I go over a book, a publication, or a paper that is full of great information about Chinese tea or its culture, but is not very accessible in the West. It's either written in Chinese and not translated, or the translation is a little bit uh, sketchy. So we're going to bring that up on the screen and go over it. And uh, that's basically what Sunday Tea Book is about. We'll uh, talk also what we're going through now. I'll let you talk about that. China tea is the one where I'm a little bit uh, excited about the tea. So I'm a You really bit... have, after last uh, Thursday's uh, live, I really feel like I'm the guest here and this is the host, uh, to, <laughs> you know, to thread all the talking and stuff. Anyways. Over to uh, you, John. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> that's the feeling. Well, good job on the live. And uh, today we're talking about uh, white tea from the book China Tea, written mm. by my mom, Jianli Wu. And um, it's a great tea, uh, tea book for lots of you who either just started a Chinese tea journey or has been drinking tea or learning about tea for a mm -hmm. while. Uh, this tea really, t uh, this book really touches on almost every aspect of it Chinese really tea from mm -hmm. a Chinese perspective, which really helps us besides all the new learnings or little itty bitty little things of Chinese tea so sometimes we will overlook. It also mm -hmm. help us uh, organize our uh, informations and knowledges and through translation live, it's good to get us on the same page with oh, tea time. names, tea terms, as well as a lot of things that we thought we understood each other, but uh, actually didn't. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I want to emphasize that. Yeah, or, that's a really key point because uh, even just this morning, we were talking about um, because it's spring in China. Let's tell that anecdote. This is so okay. powerful and illustrates the power of Sunday it's tea book. It's not by spring. It's still and why in we do general it. winter. Right. It's winter, but it's the harbinger of spring, right? So they have the uh, quote unquote plum blossoms coming out in Beijing. We got some lovely pictures no, from, Nantong. in Nantong from Jianli. Sorry, that's right. She had to go down south to Nantong. And, but just the translation of that word tells us so much about uh, uh, why it's confusing. What was the Chinese word for that? Mei, mei? Uh, sometimes we just call that Mei Hua or mei hua, sometimes right. La Mei Hua. And it ends up translated in English as plum blossom, right? Sometimes. But it's wax flower. You see a lot of it. You but it's not quite a wax flower. Right. I look at it up, I see the uh, but it's not plum. translation. It's not plum, it's mm. not wax, it's a uh, winter sweet, I think. Right. But it's just that uh, those translations are directly in a, a character in the word. Mm. But uh, it's not quite right. Right. So we see that all the time in, in tea terminology too, where characters are translated directly or the character can have two meanings and it gets really confusing. Having that happen live, rape, and sharing that together really helps you understand not just how to sort up that confusion, but how the confusion exists, help you avoid confusion in the future. Mm -hmm. All right, so Instagram, it's time to say goodbye. We're gonna head over to YouTube only because we're gonna bring the book right up on the screen. I'm gonna read out the, uh, the, the part we're going over and then we're going to dig into what I got from it and Jen's gonna make sure we didn't miss anything. So Chloe C, hopefully we'll see you on the YouTube side. Bye-bye. Do you mind put on a brew pen, please? Not at all. Okay. I'm gonna dress this since I'm the brewer. Yes, There's good no one. Point put that in I middle, was gonna slide it? over a little bit, but no, let's just do that. Good one. And mm -hmm. I'll give you uh, picking a thumbnail. Oh, that's a great one. I got lucky this time. But somehow my title. Cindy, I'd love to see the plum blossom someday. I'll bet it's beautiful. I'm gonna throw some up on the Discord just because you asked. Um, I've got the pictures. I know you mean live. You, it'd be much more fun to see those live. Mm -hmm. But I'll send you the pictures that uh, Jian Li shared with us on the Discord. Yeah. There we and go. And then these uh, little flowers you will see are really fragrant. No, 
can I say really fragrant? It's not overwhelming. It's gentle. Right. We have a saying right. that after snow, those flowers smells even better because uh, I guess the air is purified. Right, then, right. But right. they still giving out that aroma, so that uh, it really, it really accentuates that uh, gentle mm. aroma. Right, just like the air is so clear that the gentle aroma can reach you more easily. Less competition. Oh boy. So I finished off my live on Thursday with the white tea and I'm excited to dive back into this one. Mm. Oh wow. It's really creamy. Like mm. uh, soil, I don't know, I keep using soy milk or I like sort of being creaminess to describe a, uh, this white tea, this kind of white tea. Again, I'm using boiling water to brew it. Mm. Yes, boiling water really brings, allows all the essence to really come out. Right. I'm going to just check on some comments. Having some Bai Mudan, diversified brewing, some Bai Mudan brewed in Gaiwan, but without the lid. The pot is glazed, but, uh, but heavy. Mm. Thanks, I'll take the, and Cindy will take the Discord pictures for now. Oh yeah, trivia is coming up. So um, Berang asked if there's trivia today. No trivia today? No, there is trivia today, 100%. We are going to actually, just taking our time, enjoying this tea. Wow, amazing uh, aroma on the lid. Do take the Heavy. time. Mm. The, it has a weight. It's an aroma yeah, that has yeah, weighty, weight. Weighty, weighty, sort of. Um, it's not like a flowy. Right like a pungent, uh, different style of aroma. And Cindy is making her yin jen in a glazed teapot. Would it be better off making it in a gaiwan? Oh. No, I think it's really up to you. Yeah. Yeah, and when it gets low, uh, whoever is having white tea, when your tea starts to get tired in the gaiwan or the teapot, you can always throw it into a kettle and boil it. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to get uh, some more longevity out of your tea. Hey, Betty, welcome to the uh, stream. Great string of emojis. Oh, look, tea. Is that tea with milk, maybe? Look like it. And Beirang says, yay to trivia. So without, without delaying, let's move over and get the Sunday tea trivia started. So I'm going to warn you today, we're going to start right away with the tea trivia time. Okay, everybody? So okay. get ready. We're going to okay. jump right into the There's title something screen. something new here? So, not really new. Okay. I'm just going to... Uh, Hit this, and then we're gonna go tea trivia. Here we go. <laughs> tea trivia, trivia time. time. Crowd goes wild. All right. And as always, guys, tea trivia is all about warming up, having fun, and just enjoying. You know, we're just gonna warm up into the white tea session here. So take a guess if you're not sure. It's not about having the perfect right answers and all that. It's just for fun. So um, we're going to be kicking off in about five seconds. Just enter the number. You don't have to enter the text like the, uh, like the system says. You can just put the number when you have your answer. And here we go. Question, the first question. Our white tea producers' names, in quotes, are Qingming and Feng Yu, Shenong and Lu Yu, Tai Qi and Bai Hao, or Shifu and Shi Tai. Our white tea producers' names are Qingming and Feng Yu, Shenong and Lu Yu, Tai Qi and Bai Hao, or Shifu and Shi Tai. So if you're new and you think, geez, what a kind of a mean question. Um, th this information is on our blog. It's in Cha Ren. So if you're kind of new to us and just found out, don't worry, just take a guess. But all their names and their kind of deeper stories are available. I think we have links to those down in the descriptions. And if not, I will definitely add them, add them in there. So uh, Fernanda took a guess at number three. And you still have a few more moments to yeah. submit your answers here, even when you see the, uh, the sort of brewing your answers screen. Oh, wow. Bruno guesses four, Cindy four, some guesses for three, and Cindy does TTT, exclamation, T trivia time. Mm. Figgy Preserve says, hey, maybe four. I feel like three is for another type of tea. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's the answers, folks. The, uh, the tea producers' names, our white tea producers' names are Shifu and Shitai. I put names in quotes because these are more titles, 
but it's, it's kind of what they go by, so it works. Great guesses, everybody, and good job for the three of you who got that correct. Next question. The temple on Taimu Shan, it wedged between the cliff faces, is made of bronze, two, wood, three, copper, or four, bamboo. What is the temple on Taimu Shan that is wedged between the cliff faces made of? We were talking about uh, the vlog, the travel log of our trip to Taimu Shan, and this one is kind of this answer is embedded in that video too, or if you've ever been there yourself, perhaps you've seen it. So, what would that be made of? Fernanda guesses bamboo. That's a good one. This tea is just delightful. I really like tri tea trivia. It's almost like a chance for me to really just enjoy my tea, not much talking, right. and in my own world, and just watch uh, everything happening. Ooh, Betty guesses three. Copper. Beirang, three. Am I saying that? Beirang. Bruna guesses four. Cindy guesses four. Mm. Yeah. D's Versified goes out on a limb with number two. Ooh. And the answer is three. If you can believe it, it's made of copper. It's this shiny metal building stuck between these two cliffs. It's really spectacular. Really something to see. So good work, Betty and Berong, on getting the right answer there. Oh, Figgy just a little bit late. All right, next question. A Chinese saying about white tea. Number one, one sip and you're hooked for life. Oh, I misspelled life. It's supposed to be hooked for life. Two, first year tea. Third year, medicine. Seventh year, treasure. Three, you can't beat the real thing. Four. Every step makes a footprint. Dee's Versified says, what? Wow, to the copper, right? I can't imagine yeah. like just that much copper. It is, mm. it is extremely stunning, not to mention expensive. And when you see the position of that temple, the first thing through my mind, I think through a lot of people's mind would be, yeah. how the heck did they get all that material up there? Right. Not light, not easy to work with, not a hospitable working environment. <laughs> Okay, last few moments to sneak your answers in for a Chinese saying about white tea. We've got a couple guesses for two. Oh, Figgy comes out strong with a for sure two. Betty two, lots of guesses for two. Cindy, although four sounds more deep, every step <laughs> makes a footprint. Mm. Agreed about the, the deep. All right, so great work, everybody. Oh, so oh, that's such an interesting smell. I think we got a we got a home run, guys. Everybody, everybody got, got it right. It. Wow! Oh, like seven people with the right answer. Great work, everybody! Wow, that is right. First year tea, third year medicine, seventh year treasure. As you guys know, you can age white tea. All right. Question. Next question. Taimu Shan is located in Fuding Zhejiang, Fuding Fujian. Or three, Ping, Ping Tong County, Tai Wu Township. Oh, sorry guys, my mouth isn't working. Or four, Ningde, Fujian. Tai Mu Shan is located in one, Fuding Zhejiang, two, Fuding Fujian, three, Ping Tong County, Tai Wu Township, or four, Ningde, Fujian. See what the answer is. That last sip was so good. The, uh, really aroma. lingering. Mm. I don't know if you noticed the whole mouth and the nose. It has that lingering. But you. Mm. But it's light. It's not like oolong because it's strong. It's lingering. Yes, it's, it's powerful something but light. Mm. Yes. Okay, answers are rolling in. Cindy got a little tea beside her too. Uh, but people are guessing Fuding Fujian mostly. Uh, Fernanda come in with Fuding Zhejiang. Good job, everybody. I look so serious. I'm just reading this. I'm actually really excited to smell the lid. Figgy Preserve says, age white is the best white, in my opinion. It becomes so much deeper. Mm. Hot. Watch out. There's a light floral there too. That's just mm -hmm. it's it's really, really complex. It's uh, so complex as its own huh? case. It's a new one. I missed huh? the answers. Oh, 
I think we were too in, too engrossed by the tea. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> we're going to see how you did in the end. Sorry. <sighs> Next question. Bai Hao Yan Zhen, Bai Mudan, and Shou Mei are one. <laughs> I totally missed the answers. Quality Sorry. levels. Two, brand names. Three, plucking standards. And four, cultivars. Or four, cultivars. What yeah. are Bai Hao Yan Zhen, <laughs> Bai Mudan, and Shou Mei? Oh, boy. It, uh, the tea might have... Mind. Yeah. Cindy, the letter T in your answer might have made it hard for the, the uh, little machine to pick it up. Um, okay, guys, I'll pay attention for this one for sure. So are they quality levels, brand names, plucking standards, or cultivars? This is a good question, and we're going to get into it a little bit more. <laughs> All right. So soon we'll find out how we did on question five. Gotta pay attention to I the completely tea. missed right. how we did on question four. I love how relaxing this tea is. Kind of a not ideal for a Sunday tea book, but... Oh, it's, it's ideal for life though. Wow, it's I really working on I think it's me. just, uh, you know, I would like to sit in front of the window. And way to go, diversified. Oh. And uh, I can't see who that is. Oh, Bruna, 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 good job. It is a yeah. plucking standard. Quality levels is... We're going to talk about that. So let's leave that on the shelf for now and we'll come back to it. Right. Great work, everybody. Let's see how the roundup is. How did everybody do? All right, Bruna on the leaderboard with four correct answers along mm -hmm. with these versified and Betty with three correct answers and everybody's a winner in my book. You guys all did a great job. Way to guess, way to have fun and uh, participate. Uh, tea book, tea... Tea trivia time tea is, trivia. <laughs> is one of my favorite things. I've had such a blast with it. So um, thank you guys for making it so awesome. Now oh. it's time to get down to business. <laughs> it was really fun though. I, I have to say I'm, I really enjoyed that too. Just to sit and to watch and have fun. And, <laughs> and sip tea. I really like the... Um, I like to make the questions fun but also a little bit tricky. You know, yeah. I always throw in a little like something that really could be as well. Uh, for example, the last question, Laws right? Quality level versus plucking standard, which we will get into. All right, so well done, Bruno. Well done, everybody. Let's head over to the uh, to Sunday Tea Book and get started with white yeah. tea. A little sound effect. Oh yeah. All right, guys, so here we go. We're working our way through China Tea, as Jen said earlier on. Uh, a fantastic book by Jen Li Wu. A great, a great book for beginners, a great book if you're an advanced Chinese tea drinker to really uh, baseline. It's really a reference, something you can come back to over and over. You're always going to get something else from it. And now uh, the finished translation or the updated translation is available in its entirety on our website. If you haven't got it pulled up already, the link is down in the description below. Uh, you can grab that. It's really handy to follow along because every now and then we keep a pinyin word and it will be easier for you to see how the pinyin is spelt and the uh, characters are sometimes there as well. Really making our way along in this book quite, uh, quite handily. All the way through parts one, we're in the back end of part two. We've gone through green tea, dark tea, black tea, oolong tea, and now we've made our way. Um, uh, oh, I almost forgot yellow tea down there at the bottom. Now we're into the white tea section. And you can see why it's gonna be a bit of a short one today, because this one doesn't have um, many teas uh, described in it, just the white tip silver needle. So we're gonna do the whole section today. Mm. And here we go. If you're interested in what the characters look like, there they are. Bai Cha, right there. And, nice uh, circle. Not bad, not bad, right? And I'm going to go ahead and read through this whole page. White tea. White tea, which seems that the tea itself is white or the tea soup is white from its name. In fact, it is not true. It got its name because of the tip and the surface of leaf with a layer of white hair-like needles. White tea has the effect on detoxification, treatment of toothache, prevention of sunstroke. First sight. White tea belongs to the fermented tea. China is the only country that produces white tea all around the world. White tea is mainly produced in Fujian. Taiwan also has a small amount of production. Traditional pharmacological shows that the cool white tea has the effect on cooling pathogenic fire, 
and is regarded as rare treasures. The main varieties of white tea are silver needle, white peony, gongmei, shoumei, and so on. Especially white tip silver needle is full of white hair dressed in the bud tip, straight shape, such as needles. It is one of the most beautiful appearance among all tea. It is also loved by people. I'm going to cruise right through the page and then we'll come back. Sounds good. Unique way to produce tea. Basic processing is withering, drying or drying in low temperature, and the key focus on withering. The traditional way to produce white tea is not fired nor rolling, so the color and taste are light. The tea shoots and tips of the big leaf tea are fat, rich in inclusions. The ripe tea is solid and thick, which increases the concentration of tea flavor and resists the brewing degree. Carefully watching. The soup of the white tea is bright and yellow. The charming fragrance. White tea has a clear and mellow taste, pure and elegant fragrance. The bottom is well proportioned and oily tender. And that is the page. All right. Let me bring my notes over here. White tea. Okay, so it seems like uh, a couple of things I noticed right away is first the, um, it seems like they're talking about that the sort of common uh, misconception that white tea is named because of the color of the leaf or the color of the liquor. Oh, and, just sorry to interrupt. No just worries. a quick uh, answering. Because Cindy is asking, are you using right. boiling water or a bit cooler? A I am question. using boiling water to brew this tea. This is our uh, top grade by Hao Yin Zhen. Mm. It totally stands up to boiling water. Mm. Uh, even I needs don't have it. any, yeah, it really brings it out. I don't mm. have any bitter or astringency, but I, if you are having a more uh, a regular, like a white tea and stuff, mm -hmm. or most mm -hmm. importantly, if you, when you brew it, you feel like it's a little bit bitter or uh, too astringent or too strong for your liking, feel free to uh, lower the water temperature. Yes, absolutely. That reminds me of a video that we did on water temperature. So I'm going to link it down below because it's a great video about what, you know, how water temperature works. But with this tea, you really would miss out on something if you didn't use yeah, it really uh, boiling water. That sick most build. I want to linger for one moment too, because there's a tendency to think, especially with the word like top grade in the name to think, Ooh, that must be so delicate and so exquisite. And that is in fact, a hundred percent true. It is delicate and exquisite, but not in the sense that it, cannot withstand boiling water. You know, you don't want to put this tea in a, in a container and shake it up and break it all into pieces. In that sense, it might be a little bit delicate. Although these buds are super plump and tender. So they're even robust in that regard. But in terms of water, you want that hot water to pull that out. All right, so back to paragraph one. Um, so it talks about that sort of confusion about what is the white of white tea? And they mm -hmm. kind of seem to be saying, hey, that's because of the, the white hair, the white fuzz on the, uh, on the tea leaf. So that's a good one. But then they call the white hair like needles. And it made me think, I was like, I never even think of the individual hair as a needle, but I think of the bud as a needle, but you could think of the hair as tiny little silver needles, you know, when yeah. you zoom in on them. Yeah. Uh, there's so many metaphors mm. for these little fuzz and there's a, so much obsession with the fuzz and it's appropriate. They're delicious. They bring that sweetness and that character to this tea. Yes. Um, and it also talks a little bit about detoxification, treatment of tooth decay, prevention of sunstroke. Um, right. I, I just want to point out that that also mentioned later on talking about traditional Chinese medicine. Mm. So that, that kind of detoxification and tooth uh, ache and all those is from the TCM, the traditional Chinese medicine sense. Right. So it's um, like a tooth ache, if you have cavity, it's not going to help. It's like uh, those uh, more of a, like a sore gum or, right, you okay. know, especially sometimes you have people, if they get really stressed out with a lot of stress, they might have sore gum, that kind of a oh, tooth ache, I that see. kind of a fire in the TCM, we think is a fire induced inflammation uh, kind of mm -hmm. symptoms. So white tea has a cool properties and uh, help reduce right. those. That's why it also help like prevent some stroke in the summer. Right, right. I was a little bit surprised, I have to say, because when we do a lot of talking or do a talk, 
We'll often brew white tea with that because it's also really soothing for the throat and upper respiratory. Mm -hmm. um, I guess they can't mention all the benefits, but that's right. one of the benefits that we love about white tea as well. Mm. In the next paragraph, first sight, that was a great segue, by the way, because we are going to talk about the, uh, we'll get down here into pair two in a minute. But, but first I wanted to mention again, especially if folks are just new and tuning in, when they say white tea belongs to fermented tea, at first I was shocked and then I remembered this book uses fermented as a synonym for oxidized. So in the Finnish translation, which is available in the link down below, we, we kind of updated that and, or clarified that to say uh, white tea belongs to the, I think the exact words we used were semi-oxidized tea family. Right, because it's there's. We use uh, li uh, slightly oxidized. Slightly, that's right. Slightly oxidized. Uh, basically, there's uh, so that just clarifies that word. I was also a little bit shocked that it's China is the only country that produces white tea, but I had to remind myself the book was published in the '90s. White tea no. hadn't. Uh, 2000. Uh, early 2000, 2000. Early 2000. Right. 2009. Maybe not so early either. Eight. Eight. I think it's 2008. At any rate, that's a time sensitive thing. It's become a little bit more, um, it's kind of escaped China now a little bit. You've mm -hmm. got uh, all kinds of different countries producing it now. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but at this time it was mainly produced in Fujian. If you remember from trivia, Taimu is in Fujian, but there are other places in Fujian yeah. that produce it as well. Yeah. And even Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Funny thing I want to say about the trivia as well is one of the answers was actually a Taimu Shan on Taiwan. So the one that was the township was a real place. So if somebody guessed it, I would have gave it to them, but no one guessed it. <laughs> See, I'm tricky. You're very hard to guess. So yeah, like you mentioned, this is a, a out of date information as now there are more people and mm. more countries are right. trying to make uh, white teas. And also in China, this kind of a, a tea making exchange in different regions are right. getting more right. popular too. That's right. Yeah. But to the majority, like the main production, like talking about quantity was... That's tea. right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you see a, tea, a white tea from uh, Yunnan or from some other region, don't be alarmed. It's not... Um, let me just get the, uh, the tea. Thank you want the tea just, cam for that? Sure, sure. I just want to show them a bit, but I poured for you already, but just want to show oh, them yeah, the liquor, see if they can see, see, the, fuzz. They can see yeah. the fuzz. Yeah, we'll uh, no, 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 here, here. Oh, here we go. Can you see that fuzz floating in the liquor? Really pretty. Yes. So I want... Oh, wow, good shot. Right? A lot of focus, but you can tell that that's fuzz. Does that help, help it focus? Oh, there it goes. Oh. There it goes. Oh boy. Oh boy. You see that? See those little baihao? See the radiance of the liquor, mm. even with the fuzz. Like when we talk about clarity, mm. talking about how, uh, you know, transparent or stuff, it doesn't mean the liquor is absolutely out of nothing. Out of nothing? I mean, n nothing in the liquor. It doesn't mean the liquor is um, yes. completely void of anything floating in it. Yes. It can still, it still has like a radiance from the... The liquor itself, but mm. the tea fuzz in it doesn't make that murky, like murky mm -hmm. or stuff. Like it's still very radiant with the clear shots of those. Right on. Yeah. So on to paragraph two, they call traditional pharmacological is basically traditional Chinese medicine is I think what they're trying to say there. That was a little bit at mm -hmm. first. I didn't know what that meant, but from mm -hmm. a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, um, let me find my spot here. Um, oh, that's all I wanted to say. And then it goes on to some of the effects. It's, so it's a cooling thing, which is, again, not that surprising. It's uh, not heavily processed. So tea is, in general, right? Green tea is cooling. White tea, it didn't, doesn't, shouldn't be too shocking. Tea in general is cooling. Mm, right. Pretty cooling. So black tea is considered warming. And right. fermented tea is considered rather like, uh, like or aged tea, a little bit to the neutral side. Right. And then they cover the main varieties here, silver needle, mm -hmm. white peony, gongmei and shoumei and so mm -hmm. on. Um, and then if they talk a little bit about uh, silver needle. So th those weren't too surprising. I'm, I was a bit surprised they mentioned gongmei and shoumei and so on. Because for me, it's, that's kind of got pretty much most of them. <laughs> but... Uh, it's just it, no. There are lots of uh, right. like a different white tea. If you like want to say or... yeah, no, Dai Qing is yellow tea. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Yue Guang Bai, mm. right? There, there are more white teas coming. Right, right. 
Um, but it, basically, this, this whole paragraph was pretty understandable. And if you guys at any point have any questions about, mm. uh, about something that we didn't talk about, feel free to shout out. We're going to come back to the uh, comments, uh, you know, and, and if we see them like right away, if they're urgent, we'll get them right away. So unique way to produce withering. Right. Basic processing is withering or drying and low temperature and key focus on withering. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty, um, pretty straight up. And then it's not fried or rolled. Uh, but they do mention ripe tea and I didn't know really what that meant. The ripe tea is solid and thick. Uh, I didn't know, I couldn't figure out what they meant by the word ripe here. Is that maybe the finished tea? Uh, like the, yes. uh, uh, why the ripe tea though? Anyway, it means the finished tea, the dry the leaf that right, we purchase. Right. Yeah, the finished tea. It means, the, yeah, that's bizarre. And the tea shoots and tips, okay, so for another thing that we should clarify is tips in this book usually means the fuzz. So the, the tea shoots and fuzz of the big leaf are uh, fat and rich in inclusions, which I think just means they're super nutritious. Like they're, and that is true, like the, the fuzz on white tea is very uh, nutritious and sweet. It's really a lovely uh, contributor to the flavor. Yeah, I think the um, I, in this section is slightly tea tea language related. That's why mm. I feel like I, it's so struggle to make sense or stuff like that. So I'd like to just go through that and make sure uh, the Chinese version is uh, kind of uh, the most sure. information are going through. So. Like you said, basic process is uh, withering or sun drying, or sometimes it's a low heat, uh, low heat drying. Mm -hmm. So you might hear that sometimes I call that toe, toe roasting, but like talking about roasting, it's right. almost like talking about cooking. It doesn't yes. specify anything except it has a heat involved. Right. Temperature, length, those are not very, uh, those are not specified. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes people call that baking, or sometimes people will call that roasting. In terms of... It uh, definitely threw me off early on, because I just assume it's like high temperature, possible long time, but I, mm -hmm. I had no idea. It can be very, very gentle, gentle sort of 30, 40 degrees heat, C, 30, 40 to C heat. Yes really a surprising but still um, I mean that's sort of the details of processing that's the magic yeah so uh, just uh, want to point out the roasting doesn't equal the roasting the firing the whole uh, tasting notes it depends on mm. how it is done it can be totally not detectable like this tea right. as the roasting which is almost a, a classic step for almost all tea because teas right. are made in the cells and it's a humid and raining mm. and no guarantees for sun. So right. they kind of uh, imagine all times they have to dry the leaves. That's why they use this. Mm -hmm. And uh, key step is withering. So withering and drying, people think white tea is simple and a simple equals a simple step equals easy to do. So a lot of right. tea farmers from different areas when they start to do uh, a little bit, uh, you know, trying to elevate their product. The first step is to white tea. Uh, white tea is not easy to do. You can, of course, once you dry a tea, you can call that any tea you like. Right. But uh, to actually do a proper white tea is very tricky. That's why a lot of times by certain teas, you will see they have the current year white white tea and you look at the leaf is brown, oh. but they still call that white tea, right? <laughs> I remember that we, we were at a tasting once and we were tasting a white tea from somewhere in the world um, that wasn't China and they brought that and I'm like, oh, what, what year is it? Because it was a really nice dark brown leaf. It looked, looked like I was guessing sort of three to five year old aged tea and it was current year aged tea, but it was really brown and that's not what you're looking for mm. in, uh, in white tea. But, uh, right. <laughs> but it's like that. Funny. But uh, if you think it's just a pluck and dried, that should be pretty simple to make. But, uh, right. you know, those teas, they're, pluck, they're not handled gentle enough. And some people think, oh, it's just a wither and dry and sun dry. Let's put that under the sun and dry mm. it. Guaranteed it's going to be brown. Yeah. So how to do it? 
Uh, yeah. What's the time frame based on your cultivar? The plants you have yeah. are they suitable for making a good white tea? There are many things to be discussed, uh, rather than just uh, jump into uh, yeah. doing and there's the no steps, easy tea. And there's no steps to recover or to sort of if there's a little error, sometimes you can mask it with a following step. Guess what? There's only two steps. You cannot right. you cannot make a mistake. Um, and like, just like a really good quality piece of food, if, it, if it's very simple and has less steps, the material really matters in that case too. There's, again, not much, uh, not much to cover things up. So it really is, uh, I remember in, if you check uh, the Charan magazine, we, in 2019 we have an article that goes in depth on our visit to Taimu and the roaster for uh, our, this white tea, uh, who helps with Shifu and Shatai, he's been doing this for over 50 years. That's sort of the skill level that it takes to, to gently uh, roast this tea and not leave a trace of that roasting. Mm. It's just an exquisite skill. Mm. And later on in the paragraph, it says big leaf tea. Mm. Right? Good one, right yeah. Here. yeah. Perfect. So big leaf tea, what it is talking about is da ye cha, mm. uh, means cultivars with a big leaf. In terms of uh, what's big tree, what's big leaf, what's small tree, small leaf, we talk about puar a lot with it. White tea is also ha using a big leaf cultivar, mm -hmm. but it's not tree. So right. uh, if you check out our puar video, uh, we made, I made a sheet to kind of explain what's the relationship. So right. white tea, like you, if you see our Vlog, you will see those, uh, especially Da Bai Hao, Da Bai Cha. Their leaves, full grown, can be like mine. The size hand of a size. hand, yeah. I think very we even big. have a picture of Jian Li with a leaf on her yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, it can be very big. Mm -hmm. And uh, but those ones also have uh, more, you know, fat and sturdy and strong buds, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and richer in the substance, which make the the tea not resist the brewing degree, you might think about the water. Right. But it, in Chinese, nai pao du means uh, endure, uh, endurance, like how long, uh, how many mm. infusions you yeah. can brew and uh, richer in taste. Yeah, and that's a great point because uh, sometimes you'll look at a top grade tea and you'll think, of course it will have that price, but it's going to bring you that flavor and it's going to yield a lot of tea. So that's something to consider when you're looking at a very high end tea is that you're going to get, in fact, I think there was a tea meme on the, uh, somebody posted a tea meme a while ago about, uh, about a guy doing the math in his head. Oh, that cake costs so much, but mm. I'm going to get this many infusions per five grams per thing. That's like 400 liters of tea. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> Trying to convince himself to go for the big, the big purchase. But it is true that a top grade tea, a real top grade tea is going to give you more robustness when it hits the guy one. All right, carefully watching. The soup of the white tea is bright and yellow. That gets a check mark from me. Uh, pretty simple. The charming fragrance. White tea has a clear and mellow taste, pure and elegant fragrance. The bottom is well proportioned. So let's just say the bottom, by that, that they mean the, uh, the brewed leaf. The brewed leaf is well proportioned and oily tender. Mm. That's an interesting um, choice of words, but I, and I actually like it. A lot of times, um, it's an interesting way to describe silky, but I think it's got a little bit more... That's uh, the oily, is when the it's teeth that... buds get wet and yes, stuff. Yes, I don't it... know if you can see that Yeah, here. let's go to the brew cam and give him a nice little close-up of that. That's okay, yeah, it's falling forward. That's gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna focus yeah. right in, right in now. Yeah, no, focus, didn't work. Focus. I thought maybe I could convince it with my voice. Focus, didn't work. Focus. Did it work? Hello, hello. Yeah, no, more. I'm going to switch view. No. We'll try it this way. Maybe it'll cooperate better. Why is this? There we oh, go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the... Um... Oh, it's getting in. It's, it's still like searching, but there we go. Now yeah. it's got it. So you see how that looks slick? It does. It looks like almost like a... I don't know if this is bad or good, but it looked like almost like a the skin of a seal or a whale, mm -hmm. except it's green, of course. But uh, that would be weird. But you know what I mean? It has that oily luster. Oh, my brain is so tangled. <laughs> right from yes. using the uh... using the camera, the left and right, and everything with my oh. All right, so let's check the um, 
Oh, Josh, no, I'm late again. And still miss tea trivia, even though we, <laughs> we eased into it real slow this time, Josh. Just trying to give you some time to... I swear I even set an alarm this time. It's okay, buddy. At least you're here now. That's all that matters. We're glad you made it. That didn't go off. Oh, well, I'm here now. Yes, that's right. Cindy, I was also shocked when I saw fermented, but then checked mm. the translation. Whew. Mm, yes, as, as we mentioned, if you're just joining late like Josh, just kidding, buddy. Uh, <laughs> the finished translation is in the description down below. You can pull it up. It's really handy to go along with. And indeed, it's, uh, it's ox, uh, partially semi- what was the exact word? Slightly oxidized mm. is how we describe white tea. Mm. I heard a good way to describe it too. Um, oxidation is neither encouraged nor discouraged. I think that's pretty cool too. Yeah, yeah. They're careful not to do anything to encourage it there, but mm. they don't actively discourage yeah. oxidation. The either. oxidation just happens because mm -hmm. of the process. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, Cindy says, so tricky. I agree that word fermentation is really tricky. So if you're ever in a situation where you're not sure, it's always good to just ask whoever you're talking to, do you mean microbial fermentation or enzymatic browning? If you want to blow their pants off with fancy words or you know, you could just say or oxidation. And then Josh says, oh my gosh, great minds think alike. I just had a random craving today for white tea. Who knew this episode would be about it? Brew mm -hmm. it up, brew it up and let us know what you chose and how it's going. D is versified. It's perfect for Florida weather. It's hot today. Mm. Ooh. I'm glad for you and I'm at We're least, at least slightly day. jealous. Yeah, it's like blizzarding here. Uh, big snow coming off the lake. So enjoy your warm weather and you're right. The white tea is a really nice tea. I love to have hot white tea on a hot summer day. Cool me right down. I feel like a white tea in the dead of the winter is a hibernation tea. Mm. Really calms everything, just spaced out. Yeah, mellowed us right yeah. out, especially this one's powerful. So Beram says, Beram Hakami says, do you know what the difference taste-wise between silver needle and silver needle cake is? Oh. I don't know what silver needle cake, what he means. I guess... I assume, just oh, correct me, yeah, oh, if we, you tea. don't, you didn't mean that, but I assume uh -huh. you were talking about pressed silver needle, uh, in which case, if these are two, um, how should I say, the most of the difference you will see is not between pressed or not pressed, is the material are fundamentally different, uh, mm. different uh, material, but if they are the same batch, uh, some pressed, some not pressed, they will be very, very similar. The pressed one will be slightly softer because when pressing, they have to uh, get the leaf a little bit softer. Right. And yes. So, so they have a little bit of steam to you press need those? steam. So mm. what it means is so the tea goes through a little bit more like oxidation war. Right. It's really short, really short. That's why in terms of Not taste, uh, you can almost ignore it and it's not made a difference. But I think your first point, and it was brief, but uh, so I want to come back to it. Your first point was the most important, which is it really matters what is the source of the material that the cake is made with versus mm. what is the source of the material that the loose is made with. And if they're the same, you can go to part two. Yes. They're going to be very similar. Mm. But I have a feeling that's probably going to be, it may or may not be rare. You, it doesn't happen much. As a tea mm. vendors, we either press it or not press it. Or as a one product, uh, really identical to sell, you know, one pressed and one not pressed. It mm. doesn't make much sense, mm. I think, but uh, you never know. Right. Uh, on the other and hand... And we really like side-by-side -side tasting, but we right. would be more likely to do something like a silver needle and a baimudan from the same garden by the same producer. So you can taste the difference between those, you know, more fun, you know, maybe. I'm not saying we did it, but that would be more interesting than press or don't press because there's not much difference. Yeah, Product-wise, you wouldn't, mm. I think, maybe people wouldn't do that too much. They could be like a different... I, I honestly didn't areas. think of even a cake of silver needle because I it's not so I was gonna uh, bring out the second point is uh, uh, if you're okay there's, there's no like uh, even when I talk about uh, the previous I talk about uh, some white teas are brown and stuff I talk my standing point is white tea has a standard and it's a concept from Chinese 
uh, Chinese tea. So I'm sharing with you what's the Chinese standard about white tea and stuff, and right. those doesn't match. On the other hand, as tea drinkers, all we care is do we like the taste of it? Do right. we like the price of it? If you like it, there's nothing wrong with them. Those teas, drink it, enjoy it. It's not like, oh, those are awful. Don't do it. Don't drink mm. it. It's mm. not like that. I'm just saying from the tea perspective itself. And uh, similar with what I'm going to say about a silver needle. Uh, if the, uh, the usually the press ones uh, will not be the top grade, like don't spend. Uh, I'm going to look, I'm going to tell you what she's trying to say. If they pressed a silver needle, it's probably not great. It's probably mediocre to bad. Because it's, it's no, a, am I being too harsh? I just it's really very feel harsh, like it's a people beautiful. People feel like oh, they shouldn't. Uh, it's a beautiful. No, they can try it if it's okay. good. But it's a beautiful tea. It's why do we press tea? Let's back up a little bit. Why do we press tea? Because it's bulky and hard to transport. Silver needle doesn't check that box too well. It's pretty compact. Bai Mudan, Shomei, giant fluffy teas. So we sometimes press them. So why did they press this? You just got to ask yourself. I'm just saying. You're too nice. No, on the other hand, the, you don't say it's a mediocre and like we always say. Okay? It has it's the not, chance of being. We don't say you only okay, drink okay, okay. good tea. Okay, no, that's I, not realistic for us. Oh, I agree. It's the value, right? Yes, so yes. are they good or bad? It depends on how much they sell. All right, I'm saying right. is if they're trying to say okay, this is right. the top grade, this is really good, this is the best right, okay, and they okay. charge you good money for a you're by right, how Indian you're right tea about cake. the value you're right about you the know value. what I mean mm. like uh, then that's a mini giveaway that's yeah. not as right. good as they think right but if are it's they a great... good tea with a good values and do you enjoy yes. that that's what yes you know agree is it a, if it's a nice that. sip you're right you're right right okay I, I came out a little strong but yes, it's just an, it all comes down to the value. We, so. And for us, just look at us. We don't drink this tea like every day. No, of course not. Right? Goodness. Every now and then we splurge. This is a big good treat. Yes, yeah, right? some That's treats so and stuff. Out. You really yes. come for that. So, And sometimes when you say, oh, it's a mediocre, it's a low tea, then people feel like, oh, I you're shouldn't right, buy you're it. Right. That but was... it's not. It's never our idea yes. of it, I only get you, the best. You're right. Do right? you enjoy the sip? And yes. Is it a fair price yes. in your mind? That's true. That's true. So I was, I came out a little bit too hot. I just overcompensated. I'm you caused a little fight between us. I know it's pretty good though. I think, I think it's fun. It's fun. Yes. Yes. So a uh, great question. Mm. So Betty, I hope, uh, Betty and Perong, I hope I that hope answer I'm... helped you out. Right. So the, the short version is not much difference. If it's, if all else being equal, there should be very minor difference. And it would be interesting to taste side by side just to see if you could taste the difference. Mm -hmm. A little bit more oxidation on the cake. Slight, slight, slight. Cindy says, you are starting to sell me on white tea. I usually only go for the aged whites, but the way you describe it and the descriptions in the book are intriguing. I am enjoying mm. the one I'm drinking. Mm. That's a great point. And I think um, if, you're, if you're somebody who can control your tea drinking, it's fun to, uh, if you pick up a, a good white tea, which any of ours would classify, not just the top grade ones, they're all processed. This kind of applies to all tea. If the processing and the material are of sufficient quality, you can age any of your teas with the exception of yellow and green. Um, but they need to have that processing and material. So it would be fun to even have a fresh one, take your notes, stash it away for three years, mm -hmm. pull it out, have it again. Good luck though. I'm really bad at that. I'm, I'm just drink, 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 and then it's gone. Mm. <laughs> but it's something fun to try. Mm. Uh, Fernanda says, oh, where are we? Reiner, Reiner. Hey, Reiner Pretz, welcome back to the, uh, welcome back to Sunday Tea Book episode 32. He's back from work and happy to be here. We're happy to have you. Cheers. We're drinking white tea. Let us know what's in your guy one. What's time there? Plus five. It should be about 7 p.m. there, I guess. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, around, I think. Right. Josh says, also random question. Did you guys source the buy how from BTs in London? No. Okay. And for Michelle, haha. Yeah, no. The uh, coins, check. If she's still got the coins. Am I coming out? I'm allowed to say that, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think look, you know what? Saying. I don't know. I'm, we might know. I'm not sure. Now that you <laughs> say that. No, no. Oh, did for he sure say no. Baihao specifically? I think he said. Uh, yeah, he did say Baihao. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Bayrong Hakami says, yes, pressed silver needle. Okay, we had that, right? So we didn't have our discussion for nothing. Okay. Yay! <laughs> Cindy says, I like the idea of a side-by-side -side silver needle and Bai Mudan. Mm. It's fun. It's, you can really, uh, the leaf really brings something in the Bai Mudan. Changes the character. Mm. And Josh says, I don't know, I really tend to think the steaming step that all the press cakes go through really changes the material. Mm. Hopefully not. Mm. Different thing, Mao. An opinion that accounts for a lot of difference between aged Mao Cha Puar and aged Puar cakes. Mm. You know, I think the other thing that's going to account for the big difference in terms of pressed, not pressed in age is surface area more likely than the pressing itself. A cake is not going to be exposing as much surface area. Can I, can I talk about that? It's yeah, like a yeah. hot topic. So a cake won't have as much surface area. So its aging is going to be retarded uh, because there's not as much. That's correct use of the word. I Slow didn't say down. anything. You had that look. No. Anyway, it is going to be, so I think honestly, if I, I'm going to go on a limb and I mean, I won't say much more. I'll just keep my, uh, no, no, I, yeah. no, I'm no, just, I'm I was just going to say thinking. something a little bit more strong in the sense that I think mm -hmm. most people who are pressing tea mm -hmm. are, are at least skilled enough in pressing it, that they're not detrimentally affecting their material during the pressing. No, I, you're really not. So I think most of those differences are accounted to surface area exposure to oxygen, the active ingredient in aging. AKA oxidation. Uh, I did my oxidation dance. Look, I, all he mentioned is different. And all, I don't think it's much like a good or a bad or stuff. Same two here. things when it's pressed, uh, mainly two things, pressed or not pressed, is surface, like you said, right. surface of contact with oxygen, mm. air. On the other hand, is moisture retention. Mm, that's a really good one. Right? I didn't think of that. So that, that's why I good had one. that smile. Oh, good one. Oh, it was a moisture retention smile. Two things. Yeah, oh, it's not right, just right. oxygen. Because when good it's point. a cake, the inside holds more, more um, yep. water and doesn't, easier. And doesn't let it out as quickly. Yes, yep. which also helps. Mm -hmm. While on the other mm -hmm. hand, it's sacrificing right. a little bit more contact with oxygen. It's a two-way, like an in, not You're right. out. You're right. one up, one down kind of right. thing. So your unpressed is going to get in better oxidation mm -hmm. and, and lower microbial fermentation, arguably, yeah. whereas the cake is going to get reduced oxidation and increased, potentially, yes. depends on the environment where it's stored, yes. microbial fermentation. And okay. in real life, it's not as straight up as uh, producers are just going to finish and press. They might press on demand. Right, so right, you could right. have a lot of tea. We thought it's a cake, but in the first five, ten years, they were lose the leaf. Right, that's very interesting. That's a neat point. Um, in case things weren't complicated enough. Okay, so Beirang <laughs> says, I have one question more. You can have as many as you want. There's no limit, Beirang. One question more from Beirang is bake slash roast of white tea still being produced in China? If it is, is that something that's considered rare? Great question. You want to go ahead? No? Okay. So <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, and uh, I think it's, it's pretty, as we said earlier, in the, as the book sort of intimated, there can often be a, the heat drying step, the roasting step of the white tea is part of the traditional process. So yes, it's still being produced in China. Yeah. Is it it's rare? A, I don't think it's so. It's not a very rare, but it is not a very popular. Because uh, nobody would buy a roasted tasting white tea. So it has to be very skillfully skillful. done. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So if they could, they probably wouldn't do that. They would do a lot of uh, like blow drop. Right. Really, really low. Um, right. And uh, sacrifice a little bit of uh, the aroma. But sometimes they can put a shorter time, higher temperature. And provokes the aroma. Mm -hmm. So if you were talking about really top-notch tea, like a, the our top grade white tea, like Bai Hao Yunzhen and Bai Mudan, you smell the leaf, it's not booming. Right. It wouldn't be very booming. You, it's almost like those luxury, uh, super expensive perfume. It's almost gentle at certain points. Yes, it's, it's uh, very gentle. You know, it's not like all the boss would smell me yep. kind of a, yep. aroma. And, but a certain uh, roasting process could provoke the aroma to make uh, some uh, white teas when you smell them. They're very prominent. Mm -hmm. mm. Right, right. So um, 
Josh actually steamed his own white tea cake and after steaming it was very different. Cool. That's really cool. That's courageous. Mm. Well, good for you though. He said it went from a fresh green to a more syrupy and honey-like, which mm. is really cool. Very cool. Time yeah. signature MMA. Holy last minute, I'm late. Welcome. We're glad to have you. I didn't say that very well. Holy <laughs> glad to have you, TMMA. Holy glad. Time signature MMA. So he's also been aging that material for mm. about seven years. I definitely don't think it's detrimental. Mm, yes. Neither did I. I didn't think it would be detrimental. Yeah. Just retain humidity. But pressing yes. cake also depends on how you steam it and stuff. And big machines, small machines have a quite different thing. Right. And then he got to the, uh, the, the humidity retention the same time you were saying it, I think. Mm. Time signature, Mary, we have missed you and your exuberant comments. Glad you made it. Yay. All right. So... We're Next one you're... we talk about, oh my God, nothing. I just feel like we have a lot. Right, we got to Maybe I schedule this a little bit too much. That's okay. We're heading back to the book. We're heading back to the book and into the section about the basic. Oh yeah, we've still got this page. And right. Then, oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Because... We're going to pick it up a little <laughs> bit for you folks. We're going to chop, chop, chop. Basic chop. classification of white tea, white bud tea, white tip silver needle, etc. White leaf tea, white peony, gong mei, etc. The identification of white tea. The way to identify the quality of white tea are listed below. One, appearance. Tenderness with more strong and thick tips and well stretched are the top grade. On the contrary, with thin and less tips are the inferior. The leaves are stretched but unevenness, but unevenness of old and tender or with old leaves, cured leaves have low quality. Two, color. The tips are bright silver. The surface is gray green or dark green and the top grade. Otherwise are the inferior one. Three, the condition of the leaves. Leaves are flat and well stretched. The edges are curly and unlift ripple. Bud leaves and branches are close to each other. The tips of leaves are upward and no fragments. These are the best white tea. However, the opposite are the worst. <laughs> Neatness. It requires not to be with orange old peduncle or leaves or curled leaves if has impurities is the inferior five aroma the tips with strong fragrance are the best less than that are the inferior taste the fresh mellow sweet ones are the best bitter light are the inferior seven soup the best are an apricot clear and bright red dark and turbid are the inferior eight bottom of leaf well proportioned, fat with strong bud, bright color are the best one. Hard, broken, mixed, red, yellow, burnt leaves are the inferior one. Okay, I'm gonna back up. Whoa, easy tiger. So the basic classification of white tea, I think that's pretty okay, right? We've got Baihao Yinjen, Bai Mudan, which is white peony. I don't think I mentioned that yet, but this is just the English translation of Bai Mudan. And Gong Mei, Shou Mei are, are the other, the sort of other ones. Mm -hmm. By uh, the white bud tea, white leaf tea, those are types of uh, white tea. By a uh, Bai Ya Cha, Bai Ye Cha. Oh, that's good. We didn't catch that. Mm. I have that uh, in the uh, finished translation. Nice. So those, those are tea terms. I got you. Okay, so that's a good one. So I, and I was going to say there's a few new people. So if you just got here, the finished translation is in the description down below. It's handy to pull that up and follow along, uh, follow along sometimes. And then in the identification, um, I think this is where things get really interesting. Mm -hmm. So we've got appearance. Number one, appearance. Um, let me just get my notes. It'll be much quicker. So there is one thing in here. Everything's pretty. Oh, yo, sorry, guys. My mouse got touched. Everything's pretty normal in here, except well stretched. I was like, what does well stretched mean? So tenderness <laughs> with more strong thick tips. I think we know we want tender and strong, um, thick fuzz. First, I should say that thick tips is probably so far in this book that has always meant fuzz. I don't think it means thick buds, but both do apply to uh, white tea. You want thick buds with thick fuzz. So it kind of works out no matter what. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. But well stretched, I didn't know what that could possibly mean. I don't know. It's uh, not a well stretched. It's a tea term. Ye zhang means the leaves of the buds. But zhang could mean open and stretch. But that's a, like one tea term as a, a non, not uh, a verb. 
Oh, okay. So, ye zhang means the leaves of the tea. Is this the part where we're looking for them a little bit closer to the bud? It means earlier kind of thing? I remember they mentioned that somewhere. Uh, With the leaves less stretched, but an even. It, it only means the leaves are tender and right. fat and sturdy. Okay. Juicy. Good kind enough. Of thing. Yeah. And then for color. Mm -hmm. See, um, notice the color here of the tea is not just white or silver, right? They're also looking at green or dark green. Yeah. And this is something... The white or silver is just the, just buzz, the buds, that's right. buzz part. That's right. And so the leaf underneath still has its that's own right. color, yeah. which is green. That's, that's right. why you will see something like a gray-gray. It's not like a dull gray, like ash gray. The right. gray is just because the green has that fuzz, fuzz over it. Over it. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty green, pretty gray. Sorry. Right. And I think that's important to point out because sometimes you'll see silver needle that's almost pure white, mm -hmm. meaning the bud underneath is really sort of like kind of washed out. Um, but uh, like w how we started with ours, if you noticed, I'm just going to just quickly show them. I'll just quickly show it again, right? You see how green that is. The fuzz is silver, but there's plenty of green. It's very apparent this is a leaf. It's not some piece of metal or something. Mm -hmm. That was a little <laughs> bit silly, but you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to spend a minute on that. Um, and then the edge curly. In number three, the condition. The leaves are flat, edges are curly and unlift. I don't know. It's uh, really tricky. That uh, like I really had a lot of uh, issue translating this section because there's mm. lots of uh, uh, like uh, T terms and um, hard to explain. It's talking about the shape and the look of uh, tea leaves and tea buds. So it means what it means is this kind of help you choose a uh, tender leaves which are slightly open with good patterns on the palm or uh, the okay. face of the leaves, right. slightly curved. Like uh, you see the uh, like a resilience in the leaf material itself. While the older leaf, like lower part of the plant, those older leaves, they are usually pretty bristle. When brittle. They brittle. Mm. When they break, they break. When they uh, got a, a little stress, they, uh, they they fold. They have that fold line. Right. Or right. they're really stiff. That's how we can, like in your right. um, uh, presentation, you talk about huang pian, right? Mm. Those mm. older leaves. How could you pick that out of a bunch of leaves? Because you see them, they're the only open ones. They're right. too They old. resist processing. Yeah, it's not mm. curled. You cannot be curled. No matter what you process, they're still flat. Right. So those ones, okay. this session kind of just say those give you some hints on how to choose right. the tender ones. Got it. Okay. Mm. And then um, neatness, uh, no orange. I guess they're talking about more like brown um, or like a rust color orange. Re requires not to be with orange. I, was, uh, I think we mentioned in the finished one that it shouldn't be rusty colored, right? I, I understand. I understand. I was like, why orange? I don't understand. Uh, eventually, I know. It means the fruit, the, the, the seeds of the, of the tea plants, which means from last year's old stuff, means the neatness oh, no means seeds. the purity. Yeah, there's no seed, there's no stand, no stuff. Oh, but goodness. that word is a plant word. Is ah. it talking about uh, So if you're seeds. following along with the Finnish translation, you'll notice that we clearly say the first thing says with no seeds in it. And I, even myself, I was like, what? Why would you? And like you mentioned, it means it's older material, right? But so zhi means... It means the plucking isn't very good. Right, right. Mm. So that's so, that's but funny. But by itself, a certain point, it can mean... Uh, not quite orange, it's a little bit a smaller, a certain type of orange mandarin thing. Right. But then not in this case. Okay, so we caught a big, uh, a big mistranslation there. That is actually means tea seed. Whoops. Okay, so that's What's why I was so confused. What's old peduncle? I don't know. Old peduncle. Oh, peduncle. Old leaves. Not peduncle. Yeah, no, I don't know what that is. I kind of just went, or old leaves and said, okay, I know what old leaves are. Right. Or stand. In Chinese it says stand, so I don't know if it 
mm. pedunculus. That must be it. Old stems and old leaves or mm -hmm. cured leaves is probably curled leaves. Right. I think. Whew. And then six, uh, no, aroma. The tips with strong fragrance are the best. Less than that are inferior. Fuzz aroma. So here when we drink oh, more tea, we start to learn new aromas besides the things we're familiar. Apple, blueberry, chocolate. We learn a new, acquire a mm. new aroma that mm. are called a fuzz aroma. Chinese mm -hmm. hao xiang, that's very ah. important when you drink this kind of tea. What exactly does that taste like? You gotta drink. <laughs> yeah, no, I you, don't know how to describe that. You can that. taste the hao xiang here, right? right? It's that, let me you try, know, let me if, try and describe it. If you it. taste the wulong, you wouldn't have much of that because they don't use much but mm -hmm. You taste early pluck, the green tea, they would have similarities of that. That's unique mm -hmm. them something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sipping this and we recently had a couple really fuzzy black teas. Mm -hmm. um, and even there, there's that, of course, wildly different flavor profile Both between have, white yeah. tea and black tea. But yes, you can taste there is a little slice of similarity, mm -hmm. which is how Xiang. And it is that it's a mini, it's a mini related to the sweetness. There's a sweetness in black tea that's from the oxidation, but there's another one too. Yeah. And it shares with white tea. Mm. Okay, so hao xiang guys, hao xiang, uh, which is fuzz aroma, mm. something that you want to work on tasting and get a feel for. All right, so seven, taste the fresh, mellow, sweet ones are the best, bitter, lighter, inferior. Oh, sorry, we just did that one. Seven, soup, the best are in apricot, clear and bright, red, dark, and turbid are inferior. Turbid just means like swampy or murky. Um, we talked about that, that the liquor should be bright and clear. Even yeah. if it's full of fuzz, it should still be bright and brilliant. Mm -hmm. And bottom of leaf, uh, so is brood leaf. This is the finished tea, what we were just looking at. Well-proportioned fat. This one's pretty good. I think this is really uh, clear, you know, with bright colors are best. Hard, broken, mixed, red, yellow, burnt leaves are the inferior ones. All right. So... We still have another tea to go. Let's head out for some, uh, we, do, we still can't neglect all the questions that are coming in. Mm. All right, so uh, somebody yells the fuzz, which is also can mean the police. Fernanda toast the fuzz. I think Fernanda had to head out, but uh, I think we missed her, but we'll say oh, a, a, a late goodbye to Fernanda. And um, Time Signature says, Hoji Cha is nice. I bet roasted white tea could be very interesting too. Mm. Mm. But it's you supposedly not tasting any. If it's well made, it's not toasted. Right. You wouldn't taste it. Right. That's that's sort one of, the of thing. this standard. Yeah. Right. Cindy Tiosku, maybe uh, sorry about butchering your last name, Cindy. Cindy says, <laughs> I don't know why I suddenly what have happened? to read. I just the white tea. I feel like I'm a little bit drunk. Me too. I'm like right? a really hard to start my engine. Right. So maybe we will all be getting. Maybe we'll. We, <laughs> Maybe we will be getting to this, but what is the difference between Gongmei and Shoumei? Mm. Oh, that's a really good yeah, question. Yeah, that's a great question. Let's just answer it now. Yes, yes, uh, yes, uh, because we're not going to talk much about Shoumei or Gongmei. Mm. So uh, usually we tell people the most popular understanding of Gongmei and Shoumei is uh, Gongmei is a newer concept of uh, a marketing concept, which means a higher grade among Shoumei. Uh, almost similar to like a palace grade pour. What does that mean? Has more buds. Mm. What does the uh, gong mei? Gong means royal tribute. Uh, shou mei means uh, that kind of implicates there's more buds in shou mei, which uh, usually shou mei is mostly leaves with a little bit bud. Like plucking standard is one bud with two or three leaves, but mm. because you wouldn't use early spring teas to make it. It's later in the season and you will see more, much more leaves and much lower rate of buds mm. in Shoumei, so higher end. While at a certain point, uh, some people don't agree with this and insist that uh, Gongmei means uh, uh, the white tea that's made with their local cultivar uh, in Fudi. Uh, cai cha. Cai cha is a term that often used in tea, not just white tea, mm. 
black. It just means the local cultivars, like a group cultivar. Like talking about how many cultivars we have in China, it's a huge number, right. and a lot of them are not being classified because it's just too much,、mm. and、uh, they mutate and all those stuff. So that, like, uh, uh, like those、uh, heirloom, heirloom. Uh, all the mixture of different cultivars from seeds and stuff. Those are we call the cai cha.、Mm-hmm. Usually very good in taste and stuff. They、uh, in fooding. Lots of people insist that's what gongmei is. Okay, okay? and uh, they. Uh, then this is my personal thought. Is、uh, not necessary. I don't think this is necessary. Very right, especially they trying to say gongmei is or、oh, used to be royal tribute and stuff like that.、Um, you know, old times white tea was very predominantly like、uh, exporting tea, and、uh, oh. it's yeah. And、uh, what、well, now? Fooding is more popular in terms of white tea and stuff.、Uh, so a certain. Like decades ago, is considered Zhenghe was the origin of white tea,、mm. but、uh, now a lot of people say it's fooding.、Um, like in terms of a very strict historian,、uh, like、uh, dig out all those books and records to really source them scientifically,、uh, I didn't see much of that. So, in terms of uh, all those. Uh, Uh, fancy concept and stuff about YT. A lot of them just happened in the recent decade, like ten,、right. fifteen years, as the YT trend goes up and、uh, right. fooding wins as、uh, the place for YT. So、uh, right. just kind of、uh, share with you what's going on in the market. You、right. will see, and uh, uh, I personally think、uh, don't have to take too much consideration of. Uh, which one is right? Or is this true? Right. How、uh, is this royal tribute、uh, tea much better than、mm. any other teas? I still think there's no actual quality implication in that.、Mm. Always,、uh, you can always ask your vendors or merchants extra information about what do you mean by gongmei. I think、right. that's always. Right, the right thing to do to see what they say. And like we said earlier, right? In the end, it's your taste buds that are your taste buds and your wallet are going to get together and help you decide, right? And right. And everybody have their because of the、mm. everybody have their way of naming、mm. their teas,、mm. Mm. right? So、uh, even our shoume has a lot of bud. I just don't bother to call that gome.、Mm. This might be a good time to insert since we're on the quality question, and we did have a trivia question about by how yinzhen, by mudan,、mm. and shoume. Are they a quality level? Which I got a lot of people. That was one of my tricky <laughs> ones, right? Because a lot of people look at them as a quality standard or a quality level,、no. and it's actually a plucking standard. So as Jen already intimated, Shomei typically one bud, three, two to four leaf kind of thing. Something. By、no. Mudan, one bud, one or two leaf, and obviously by Hao Yin Jen,、mm-hmm. bud, 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 bud. <laughs> yes, and、uh, it doesn't mean Bao Yinzhen is better than Bao Mudan.、Right, yeah. They all have a huge grade,、mm-hmm. and、uh, a huge also, grading spectrum.、Uh, yes, you know, from the low grade Bao Mudan to the top grade Bao Mudan,、yes. you've got some killer tea in that top grade tier. Yes, and also、uh, sometimes we think counting、uh, the plucking standard, counting the bud and leaf is a very simple thing. But if you、mm. go to our product page, this、uh, top grade Bao Hao Yinzhen. Twenty、uh, nineteen. You go to the page. There is a picture that I put all the individual bud there, and、um, oh, if、I'm、you gonna, look at it, no, no, hang、okay. on, hang on. I'm going to do something real cool. Hang on,、oh, guys. Oh, okay. Just because this this is really good. What she's about to share with you is really、uh, handy. Let me get rid of that. Okay. And bring up this, and show you this. Double screen. Yeah, the the that picture. Yeah, I knew right away what you were、yes. talking about. So if you can make that just bigger, it'll、sure. be easy to look at. Is、right. that a little better, guys? Yeah. So you might look at it like these ones, these ones. You know, you might say, "Oh, that's not a, a bud. Those are、uh, oh, by Muda one bud, one leaf, or stuff." Right.、Uh, counting leaves at certain times, especially with all. A、uh, super early plug is、uh, tricky for、uh, beginners because they would think this is one bud one leaf. Right. It is not. When it's plugged, it's one through in the process, and this is a brew leaf. They start to fold. Those are signs of 
early pluck of good quality. Right, right. If you see those buds are just by itself, no matter what, it's just a super just bud, ultra pure, and there's no this ultra kind of a limb. It's a later season, and you will right. see later season buds, the shape of the plants, they would never look like that. Because the early time it's cold, how they grow is really like a bamboo shoot, like Louis. Chubby. Yes, mm. and they're holding together. So early mm. spring tea buds are multiple layers of mini leaves really cuddled together because it's cold. Right. <laughs> right. But later on, it's so hot, so they open up, open up. Right. So the tea buds are just a mini tea bud. Right. So they come out. Yeah, and that's why you see the book refer back again and again to uh, fat, those, those kind of words, uh, fat or plump uh, mm -hmm. buds are better, right? Because mm -hmm. it's those, it shows earlier. I just wanted to point out as, uh, at some point, uh, uh, no, especially that's... with the early plucking teas, uh, counting one leaf, two bud, uh, sorry, one bud, two leaf, or one bud, one leaf is not as simple as what you see. On right, no, and that's why I really, I had that screen ready. I, I've heard you describe that to people before, and I think yeah. that's, for you guys out there, that's a real pro tip what Jen just shared, because a lot of people do get confused by that. All right, so, um, so we're moving it along, but we're not rushing it, so we're getting you the best information possible today. <laughs> All right, so um, Gong Mei Shou Mei, I think we uh, got that covered. This is a marathon course. <laughs> this is a marathon one, guys. Stick with us because it's just getting better. For some reason, I'm enjoying the later infusions in this white tea even more than the first. It seems mm. sweeter. Mm. Good. I'm really glad you're enjoying it. It's, uh, I just love white tea. It does have... Uh, today, we're going to get a lot a long, long steeping, lots of steepings out of this, and I totally plan on boiling this when we're done. Yeah. And then Josh likes the word peduncle. It's a super obscure botany term. I think it means kind of like the stem or sort of like the stem just below the bloom or some, I thought so too, ah. right? Something like that. Whoa. And then in botany, a peduncle. Oh, Cindy went and Googled it for us, I think. Uh, she's got it in quotes. Is a stem supporting an inflorescence or after fecundation, an infructescence? Yeah, okay. Next. I just don't know what those mean. That's really, that, those are good meanings. When you look up a word and then you have to look up three more words to figure out what yeah, it means. Yeah, yeah. You know you're on to something good. Maybe it means old stem, stem supporting flower. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what fecundation is either. So Berang says, I have yet one question more. Again, there's no limit on questions. We are loving your questions, Berang. Keep them coming. Can used silver needle be used as some kind of DIY skincare product? I just think I have heard that at some point, but I am really not sure. That's a great question. Yes. And you've come to the right place. <laughs> yeah. Should see the stuff that gets put on my skin. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, you can. <laughs> I'm in charge of all the skincare purchases in the house. <laughs> And if you want to, uh, if you want to have a closer look, give her a thumbs up if you think she, if you think she's doing a great job. I think she's doing a great job, but I'm gonna let you guys judge. Have a look. Not, not too shiny. Okay, go ahead and place yeah. your votes while she describes about uh, silver needle skincare. Uh, Only here, folks. Uh, first, it's actually using a lot of uh, skincare products. Like uh, if you check out mm. Origin, Origins, Origin. It's a skincare product. They use white uh, tea, and you can use that uh, yourself. And not only white tea, almost all tea can be used on uh, skin. Of course, unless somebody is allergic to tea. Uh, but normally, you can use that. It's a, a antibacterial. It's really good. And uh, uh, oh, that's not white tea. Uh, Japanese uh, research even shows uh, tea, uh, tea kills uh, cancer cells really well. Right. Again, no, not saying it's like a... Uh, like Going to cure inner, you. Yeah, it's right. in the lab results. You right. know, cancer, cell, uh, cancer cells, yeah. tea kind of thing. How it reacts in body is different, okay? Yeah, Just yeah. saying. And uh, black tea works really well with uh, skin cancer cells. And uh, oh. But anyway, just despite that, there's no, uh, not much dis DIY? Can you crush it down and make a poultice or yes. something? Yes. Yes, okay. you can use that however you want. There's not much uh, uh, debate not much about right? yeah about uh, teas using on skins and uh, help with the inflammation situations. If you have little pimples and stuff, uh, put a tea leaf on it, uh, a wet tea leaf so the, the the juice can come out. Or you can make poultice mm. and uh, if a little 
infection, especially those hot.、Uh, like if you touch the surface of certain、uh, bumps that we have on the skin, it could be hot, like cooling effect. Right. So right. any、uh, zits or stuff, you can use that, and it's quite a very comfy and yeah. natural yeah. way yeah. to Not do it. Not going to be burning or uncomfy. Yeah. Good. So Ben Ben has an interesting point, which happens to us sometimes. He says that he was drinking Silver Needle yesterday and kept forgetting the bruise for a long, long time because he was working and distracted.、Mm. But they never got bitter, and、yes. we're always good. And he loves、yeah. forgiving tea. We also love forgiving tea, and that's what we've. Ours is really forgiving today, but you're really on the ball. The brews have been bang on perfect. Cindy says, "Wow, thanks for the show, May Gong May explanation. You have so much great information in her. Yes, isn't she amazing? <laughs> in your head, <laughs> in my doughy head. No, it's really great. Even when you're when you're tea drunk, you're still on point perfectly."、Uh, Josh says, "So sorry. I think I got a little confused. Which was the higher quality, Bai Hao? Neither. I think that's what we said, right?"、Mm -hmm. No, neither. Clocking standard doesn't equal quality.、Mm. Quality has many other uh, uh, other aspects. Oh wait, I think、no? he's talking about when you showed the Bai Hao Yin Gem, which was、oh. he may be asking about: Is it higher quality if it exposes a tiny, mini little leaf, or if it's just a bud after it's brewed? And in that、mm. case, that's indicating season. Right.、Uh, I think the best way is go on our website. If you're、mm. buying、mm. any expensive white teas and stuff, you can use our leaf shape colors of liquor as a reference, as close as possible. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a great one. Because I cannot just simply say a、oh, leaf、True. with bud is good, because there could be different shapes. Hopefully that、right? clears that、looks. up. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. So、uh, Beiran gave me a thumbs up for the skin look. It's looking, <laughs> it is, and it, if you could touch it, it's super soft. I'm telling you, it's really, it's really、um, super soft. No, it is. It's super soft.、Mm. Uh, so Time Signature MMA says Bai Mu Dan's pretty nice. I like the look of the leaves and, of course, the taste of the brew.、Mm. It's also pretty good for、uh, kombucha. Mm. Mm. That would be、mm. interesting to try. I'd love to try that. But I agree, like.、Uh, We get that question a lot about people who are a bit more, you know, getting introduced to tea. They want to branch out a bit, and they like if they like a more robust flavor. Maybe they're coming from oolong and black tea background. I、uh, often recommend Shomei by Mudan, as you know, those are going to be more full-bodied. Uh, yes. For getting you、yes. know for getting into it, then if you、uh, you know eventually you're gonna oh that's actually a good point.、Mm. Even though we always.、Uh... You know, you ask me what's a good white tea and stuff. I would recommend you my top grade, uh, Bai Hao Yinzhen or Bai Mudan. But a a lot of point, uh, I always uh, wanted to know people's background. If they just get into tea、mm. or more of a oolong and black teas, I'm really scared of、uh, recommending them those、mm. top grade. Even though, because sometimes people's question is, oh, what's your best white tea, right? The best、right. ones are really. It needs a little bit of experience. They are not、mm. uh, like uh, they're not like you smell it. You're like, oh, this is so obvious. This is, has a so it's a so gentle, like a soft talking intelligence、mm. person kind of thing. It's right, not right. a、metaphor. club. It's、mm -hmm. not entering club. You hear the music. You hear the everything. It's、right. not like that. It does needs a little bit of experience and does. Have if you are experienced with most fill and、uh, that's what what you can taste the most fill difference in teas.、So、those are teas to die for. Right. But、uh, we're talking about the flavor, five or ten. These、uh, I will stay away because honestly, as a vendor, I like、uh, mm, some people think we just want people to buy our tea. I want you to buy our tea and have good experience. I don't want you to、yeah. buy expensive tea and you're like,、oh, I just waste my money. What is this? Right. right? No,、that. we want you to fall in love with it. Yes. And there's so, sometimes there's a pathway to that, right? Yeah. Just like real love, right? You don't want to dive in right with the top gun. You want to, and that's what makes it fun. That's why we call it a tea journey, right? You can、mm. kind of taste some shome, taste some bai mudan, then go and taste some other, maybe some more delicate green teas to kind of ease your palate into it. It took、mm. me a long time to get my taste buds kind of tuned、uh, to be able to discern. Uh, different teas, and I'm still working on it. I guess for all of you are right. That's what the whole this whole thing is about. Great. Cindy says Phil's skin looks baby soft. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay, Nailed it. it. 
aha, yup, if tea could cure cancer, we it would have saved many months of trouble. It would have saved me. Oh, yeah. Especially <laughs> with how much tea I drink. Yes. Or oh, though OFC, antioxidants, etc., are all those other goodies in tea are super good for you. Yes. Yeah, that's how kind of the, the take we look at it. You know, mm. do you drink tea because it's something you love to do? Uh, the health benefits are kind of secondary and the lifestyle benefits. I mean, that's yeah. the whole thing. We were just talking about tasting and getting your taste buds in, t- in tune. That was a lifestyle benefit that I benefit from because I reduced my salt so that I could taste better. I, I realized about four or five years ago that half of the problem with me tasting tea was my salty Western diet, you know. A little bit too much processed food, you know, those stuff you microwave in a box or whatever, and then you go to try and taste tea, you think five, six hours later that doesn't affect you. It, for me, it definitely had an effect muting my ability to discern. Anyway, uh, that's off topic, but on topic, down the line topic. Very ambitious of you to think I'd be buying expensive white tea from anyone else. <laughs> or <laughs> Beirong says, in your experience, which white teas have a strong C? For me, it was a 2010 by Mudan. Mm. Mm. Uh, good question. I'm thinking back to specific white tea chat C experience. Yeah, I think that this is a kind of a cause, uh, not cause. I mean, raise a really good question. So mm. one of the questions we received on Instagram was talking about why tea have many grades and it doesn't uh, guarantee the experience. And I think that applies to almost all teas. Yes. Like yes. if you tell me 2010 by Mudan, I only know this tea is plug in 2010 and it's right. by Mudan grade. I really mm. don't know much about a tea. I, what I'm trying to say is uh, you know, it's very vague in terms mm. of uh, what by Mudan means. It means a t-shirt, kind of, if in a metaphor, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if uh, this t-shirt, right. how it's cut, what's the print, what's the color right, of it. Right. It's the same with almost every tea name. Mm. So, uh, yes, because I can say that one of my f- biggest cha tzu experience was the uh, Lao Tsong Shui Xian. So mm. I just say that it was Lao Tong Sui Xian from 2019. Right. But what you were drinking as a Lao Tong Sui Xian, where some of right. you were drinking Lao Tong Sui Xian, they're almost right. it's not the same. Guaranteed not the same because yeah. it was from specific bushes yeah. produced by a specific producer, which result in the tea having that energy or power or whatever, mm. like once it was brewed up. Mm. And furthermore, to the point of Cha Tsi, we had that tea. That was your tricky one. You did. A, we did a video about that. I'll put the link down below. She snuck that one back out on me. It didn't have the same effect at that day, at that time. So Chatsi is also very personal about yeah. your receptiveness at the moment as well as the tea. So it might not be a consistent thing. It might mm. be for you, but it might not be. It's mm. really a personal experience with the tea. Yeah. It's yeah. great to hear you talk about it and enjoy it. Because it is something I didn't get for until years after drinking tea. Yeah. My first wave uh, was really something else. Yeah, it really depends. I don't mm. have anything very strong like a cha chi. I don't think I have much, especially with white tea. My, mm. my I think environment for me, my memory is in Taimu when we were doing those top grade by Hao Yin Zhen side by side. Shifu literally had mm. three different top grade uh, white tea by Hao Yun Jen in front of us and we were sipping them and one of them was from a wild garden off mountain but mm. wa- full wild and that one was really powerful for me I don't know if it was Cha Tsi but it really hit me in a big way right right good great question Berong. I really love these questions Josh mm. says I have quite a powerful Cha Tsi experience right now to be honest it's about four years old by how and yeah very maybe tasty. tell us what Cha Tsi means to you like mm. what do you feel you classify that as Cha Tsi mm. that would be interesting to know yes because that is even different for from pe- person to person because I'm pretty dull <laughs> time signature MMA says isn't there a danger of tea snobbery or something I mean if somebody likes a tea that's considered bad quality they should still be allowed to enjoy the tea. Uh, yeah, totally agree, Time yeah. Signature. I kind of went a little overboard earlier. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you were here at that point, but we totally agree. We think that it really matters uh, how you enjoy it and is it a good value. We just, one of the things we try by 
by explaining what is considered good is just to help people avoid marketing terms and paying more than they should for a tea that doesn't deserve to be paid a lot of money for. But at the end of the day, if you love it and that's a good value, then that's a good tea. Mm -hmm. I think we agree. And you can drink whatever you want. In the tea, in the tea trivia, one of the slogans for white tea, one of the trick answers was actually a slogan for Coca-Cola. <laughs> and we don't mind. If you drink Coca-Cola, you can join us. We're all here for fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like, I mean, I, I mean, all our channels and the stuff, we recommend, we say this and that, but you know, who defines there's only one way? And right. the way I brew tea for people who do tea ceremony probably think I cannot brew tea because I brew that wrong all the time. Right. Because I just brew it. All I care is what I drink. It's not mm. I use my right hand, then I use left hand. Right. You know? She's firing for effect. <laughs> so Josh says, for instance, having a shampoo after another tea versus the same sharing alone is way more powerful is way more powerful as the second tea of the day. Also, yeah, different times of day and especially morning on empty stomach. But for me, chat tea is something that varies with different teas given the variation in compounds between e.g. white age, shen, etc. Mm. I, don't, I don't drink Coca-Cola though, winky winky. <laughs> same, same here, but I'm not gonna judge you if you do. I okay? like Canada Dry. Mm, she likes Canada Dry. I, uh... yeah, I, oh, you're not Canadian. We have a, a place called a Canadian Tire, and we have uh, this drink a called Canada Dry. It's a ginger ale. It's a ginger ale, but Canada Dry, Canadian Tire. Why not Canadian Dry? Canada Tire. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm yeah. Very confusing right for me. Anyway, do you want to finish the white tea part? The yes. Silver Needle. I think we still have one session We're gonna to go. We're going to do a long... It's a, it's a marathon <laughs> session. We're getting through the white tea. All right, white tip silver needle, guys, here we go. White tip silver needle, which is called silver needle for short and also named white tip, has a fame of beauty or king of tea. The treasure of white tea. White tips are the treasure of tea, which is a famous historical tea. In the past, it can be only produced by the newborn tender buds. So the production is in a small amount, which results its precious feature. White tip silver needle is different because of different places and production and tea species, which divides into the North Road silver needle and the South Road silver needle. North Road silver needle is produced in Fujian Fuding. The species is Fuding Big White Tea. And South Road silver needle is produced in Fujian Zhenghe. The species is Henghe Big White Tea. However, it is less bright than North Road silver needle. Appreciation always before drinking. Features of appearance. The bud head is fat and strong with white tips around the shoulders, as straight as the needle and white as the silver. Enjoy while tasting. The soup is an apricot and taste, it tastes sweet, mellow, and memorable. And I'm gonna finish on the little famous people talk about tea. Ayo. Tea can not only taste the fragrance, but also recuperate your health. Drive away the fishy smell. Don't chuckle. Prevent the illness, recuperate the spirits, release the sulks, show respect and humanity, refined heart, and also actualize mortality. Tang Dynasty, Yu Jen and Yang. Alrighty. I just love it. Well, that. when you cook fish, you can use the tea. It really helps that. Mm. It's for aroma real. absorbing. Absor aroma mm. absorbing powers for, of tea. For meat and uh, like. Uh, all the animal cooking. Animal cooking? Fish uh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, any sort of um, meaty, those mm. stronger proteiny smells. Yeah. So white tips, the first paragraph is pretty straight up. White tip, silver needle, silver needle, or white tip. We really don't typically call it that in English, but uh, silver needle is a really common short name for mm -hmm. Baihao Yin Zhen. Um, yeah, I think that's a great paragraph. Not much to talk about. Anything important? No. You can call that Injun, you can call that Bai Hao. Mm, right. But in English. First Ingen, or the last two characters both works. Right. Treasure of white tea. All right. North Road and South Road, I found interesting, sort of different. Um, I don't know. It just. I think it just means North Fujian and South Fujian. Yeah, it's the, a, it's a translation. It's a. It's n r 
though word by word it did say road,、uh, but it doesn't mean that. It means north style and northern style and southern style. Ah,、uh, ah,、uh, right on. It's a, a, an expression. Yeah, and if anybody's just joining us, or if you haven't, if you're, if you want to pull up the Finnish translation, it's in the description down below, and you'll see how we've kind of approached these.、Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the only big question I had there.、Um, Jenghe is less bright. I think that's fine. I guess it's just a little bit less lustrous. I guess.、Mm-hmm. Yes, and the 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 cultivar here is spelled it wrong. It's still Jenghe Da. I wondered about that,、it's、right? So this、pen. is the right spelling here. Yes. And this spelling is missing the Z, Z for Canadians、yeah. or the Z for you guys down in the USA and I guess everywhere else in the world. No, no English UK people call that Z. Really.、Mm. Yeah, which means probably the rest of the world because they were kind of everywhere in the UK.、Hmm. Okay, so you let us know. Do you say Z or Z? <laughs> and、um, appreciation before drinking.、Mm-hmm. Again, we've talked about this over and over. It's not very confusing, but the bud head is fat. I think that's pretty clear that、mm-hmm. we and we talked about why those are the the、mm-hmm. fatter they are, the slower they are kind of growing. They have a different shape in the spring than they do in the summer. Tips. Okay, again, it's always fuzz in this one, so there's white fuzz around the shoulders or、mm-hmm. all over the bud. Straight as the needle, white as the silver. I just love the poetry of the language here.、Mm. And yeah, I didn't have any trouble here though.、Mm. Me either. And I just love the poem at the bottom. I don't know. Was it a poem? I was going to ask you. Or is yeah, it just... it's a it's a poemish stuff. It's really tricky to translate. Yeah, can you read it in Chinese? I think they want to hear you read it in Chinese. Give、mm-hmm. us a thumbs up if you want to hear her read that poem in Chinese. I need them quick here, folks. <laughs> Smash them out. Okay. Anyways, 以茶尝滋味，以茶养身体，以茶除心气，以茶防病气。I want to say that. 以茶养身，以茶散闷气，以茶利。理人以茶表敬意，以茶可雅心，以茶可行道。哎呀 ，It's really hard to translate. She tried really like. No, I think. I don't think I can do why that. I, like why I why I read it is she、mm. did. I thought she did a pretty good job. I really like it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So basically, you can see the tears here in this、uh, poem. Is thing is. You, what what we lost on her translation was the rhythm. When you read it, that, it had the rhythm. Yes. It was beautiful. And、uh, it's also it's tiered, right? First letter, the basic of T is you can taste the, you can taste it. It has a taste. Then it can be good for the health. Then you can use that.、Uh, so the first few like a、uh, few、uh, phrases are talking about the realistic, like a、uh, real life use of tea as a、uh, you know help with your life, with your health, with your food. Uh, you know that kind of thing. Later on, is how it nourishes the mind. So, right, spirits. See, Re- yeah, release the sulks was a little bit. What、um, sulks? Um, you feel down. Help with、uh, depression,、yeah. oh, kind of thing, right, or right. Gr- grouchiness or whatever. Right, right. Help you show respect and he- like. I like how it, like you say, it goes from the very physical、yeah. and slowly walks into the, the deep metaphysical sort of aspects of tea.、Yes. Which I think,、um, and and shows how they're connected.、Yeah. That's sort of the anyway. I just really like that poem, and、uh, they well, love. Well, that's the tea culture the of、uh, Chinese Chinese tea culture、mm. has a lot of、mm. uh, from the basic thing, not just a, a tea ceremony performance, but more.、Uh, in China,、uh, it's mostly a drink for more mature people in terms、mm. of tasting great tea, as、um, you know. Middle age start to look more inward. Kind of right, kind of, right on. Yeah. So time signature. I'm just gonna pick up. I don't know if I missed a few comments. So sorry.、Mm. I'm sorry if I missed your comment, but I'm gonna pick up around time signature here. Yeah, there are lots of brewing methods out there,、yep. and they all have,、mm-hmm. pardon me, Chatsy, pros and cons. Um, lots. Yeah, I got lots. And、uh, other teas sometimes it's more. Josh says, but with other teas it's more of a perk up. Oh, he's describing. We asked about. How is chatsi for you? And he's described a couple different ways.、Mm. Uh, earlier, he said it's kind of a drunkenness, feeling a little loopy and silly. But then other times, it's more perked up, brimming with energy, super focused, kind of ready to go outside and run or do something. 
I'm definitely feeling a little bit more of the first kind today, mm. a little bit on the drunk side. It makes me really want to make things or learn things. Oh, right spot. Like cooking a brand new dish or improvising mm. a recipe. Nice. Or painting. Oh, cool. That's a great effect. Time signature says northern style and southern style. Sounds very kung fu. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I love kung fu. We just watched a kung fu movie. Yeah. It was kind of kung fu y, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, a little bit more. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Josh, or even practice piano. I always need to practice more. Yes, practice your piano. Oh, I love. <laughs> no, I want to play piano too. Betty asks, got any tips on cold brewing white silver needle? Good question. Can I answer? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you'll like my answer. So she'll update, but my answer is I don't have any tips. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's why. Why? Was because we did cold brew thing. white tea once. We cold brew, I believe it was a Bai Mudan. Yeah. And um, again, we talked about the importance of boiling water with this tea, but it stands for all of our white tea. We really feel like the substance needs boiling water to come out, and we confirmed it when we cold brewed by Mudan. It wasn't awful, but it was, we knew from our previous experience with the hot version of the tea that it was missing something. So the only recommendation I could give in clear conscience is to say hot brew it and chill it. So that mm. you get it all out with our white tea. I would say yeah. that for ours, yes. I don't, and I don't know for other people's, but that would yeah, be my I don't my have, only tip because we don't. I don't have a real tip either. <laughs> we don't do it. We, uh, we, we tried do. it. I feel like it really lost a good part of our yeah. tea. That most feel doesn't come out. Aroma is there, but it's missing. It's more mm. like a I felt like it was sixty percent of the sixty percent of yeah. the tea was present. Yeah. Yeah, we really felt bad about it. <laughs> not saying don't try it though please go ahead and let us know how it works and if you find a way that worked for you we'd love to hear it mm. so uh, I don't want to be too like I was really discouraging I'm really sorry guys I won't do that again <laughs> um, tastes uh, oops tastes memorable time signature Mary says tastes memorable I'm sure something that tastes really bad is also memorable <laughs> ah. good point but, uh, but mostly this uh, book is talking about uh, lingering Oh, lingering. lingering. Yes, memory. So the taste stays with you stays for a while. Stays for a bit. Yeah. Which could be some. Also true, could be bad. True for bad things <laughs> yes. Too. Yes. So Baron, give us a thumb up for the read, and uh, ha, I say Z when I'm doing the alphabet song, but otherwise, anytime. Yes, Z. Ah. Z. I'm stubborn and even say Z in the song, which I know is wrong. I just do it to annoy people. Yes, definitely read the poem. Thumbs up. Cindy says I say Z here in the U.S., but used Z when I taught in the U.K. Ooh, oh. wow, that's major discipline. That's tricky to switch your ZZ paradigm. When I taught in the UK, I'm planning on having ahi for dinner, so I guess I'll brew tea afterwards to drive away the fishy smell. Thank you. Mm. Liu Zhen Yang. <laughs> Liu, Liu, sorry. Um, Liu. Cindy also says, great marathon session today. Appreciate it. Ben Moore says, kung fu movie recommendation for someone who has never seen one. Oh, wow. I'm, oh, sure, here. I'm sure Josh will come out with some. I would recommend, okay, start with the whole Ip Man series. Okay, the Ip Man series is a pretty modern kung fu movie. And then you want to go backwards to the really fun, cheesy ones. Super fun. I think the 90s has the best. The 90s. Eight, late 80s, 90s, uh, Hong 30, Kong. 36 kung Chamber fu. of Shaolin. Epic. Yeah, those are er even earlier. Yeah. But uh, my favorite are in the 90s, the, the high time, the peak time of Hong Kong. Movies. What was it? Jet Li was like a yeah, young, young guy in the 90s, Jet right? Anything right. with early Jet Li is going to be awesome. Uh, the whole Ip Man series, one to four, sit down, marathon, watch it, pop a lot of popcorn, brew some tea, rock and roll. <laughs> All right, so where are we? Uh, time signature, funny, I cold brewed by Mudan a couple of weeks ago and I quite liked it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. Betty uh, gave a thumb up. It's okay, Phil. You can give it to us straight. We can take it. I, mean, I also <laughs> usually do it like that. I think it works very fine that way. I guess hot. Josh likes the Ip Man series. We both said Ip Man at the same time. Yes, Jinx. That's what Jinx means when you say Jinx. So now I can't talk. Literally the same first recommendation. I just love Donnie. Yeah. Yeah, Donnie Yen. I just love him. He does that stoic kung fu guy so well. Um, so well. Also love 36 Chamber, yes. I agree, 70s to 90s Kung Fu, big thumb up. Time signature, MMA. I think you should just dive into the old 70s Kung Fu cheese fests. Yes. <laughs> Holy lips out of sync with the talking. Batman. Right? 
right? I, I hope I get. It. I hope that was funny. <laughs> I also really enjoyed the Forbidden Kingdom with Jet Li and Jackie Chan. Great starter. Oh, that would be epic, epic. All right, so we've drifted from tea to kung fu, which <laughs> probably means it's time for us to wrap up our marathon white tea session, guys. Whoa, two hours. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for sticking with us through thick and thin. Um, love you guys. It's been great. Uh, we are on episode 32, wrapping up today. Mm -hmm. Next week, come on back for episode uh, 33. Three, let's talk about sanity. Yeah, let me just uh, show you what's coming up here with a bit of bit of And we're gonna get into our last category, scented tea, in the Chinese character, scented tea. So that's gonna wrap up that section. And then it's after that, 30, this is 32, 33, only three more episodes after that. So it is going to be epic. And then we're gonna talk about what's the next publication for Sunday Tea Book. Sunday Tea Book, there's been a few people who are sad to see it coming to an end. Mm. So I wanted to clarify, it's not over. The mm. book is simply done, but Sunday Tea Book isn't equal to China Tea. China Tea is our current topic. So we will have other topics, other papers, articles, maybe another book. We'll be, we're going to ask you guys to let us know what you want to see. Comment down below. Comment in the chat for the next few seconds. Mm. And we'll probably do a whole live just about that. Yes, this month's our live. Nice. We'll talk about that. And you guys can give us some... If you, got, if you got some good value out of today's session, please do give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. Um, but most importantly, thank you guys for sticking around, answering, having fun with the trivia, asking us questions, throwing out your two cents, letting us know how you brew and what you brew and when you brew and where you brew, how Cha Chi feels, everything. We loved it. See you and Josh, I see your comment about the classic of tea. Okay, we're going to talk about that in the live about what By are all. we going to do in the future. Right on. For Sunday tea. So guys, have a great week and until next time, Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Have fun.